Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News, and despite Ferrari's current dominance of the constructors and the drivers world championships, more upgrades seem to be on their way. The second power unit expected between Miami and Barcelona, apparently going to bring another 10 brake horsepower to their engine. Could this be the key factor to keep them ahead of their opposition? Very much intrigued your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Thanks also for a thousand subs, kind of crept up on the channel. Thanks to all of those of you guys who are new and returning as well. Firstly, on this day 12 years ago, was um, the kind of famous Sebastian and Buemi moment where both of his wheels fly off. I love this clip because um, you can see he's trying to counter steer that he's crashing into the wall. Like, um, well, he's trying to turn the wheel as much as he can on the car, but you know, you've got no wheels, mate, so it's not going to do all that much. Like, um, you, you can see it right here. Like, he's trying to counter steer the spin, but uh, yeah, you're not going to do much when your wheels are both flown off. So, incredible moment. Also, um, well, rest in peace to Frank Williams. So, Frank Williams, he would have been 80 today, legend in the motorsport world, you know, not just Formula One, of course. So, certainly wanted to remember this, but uh, well, let's talk about Mercedes first of all. Hamilton and Russell have, of course, had their few back and forth so far this year. Russell outscoring Hamilton on, I guess, two occasions now in both Saudi Arabia and most recently in Australia. But, um, you know, both of them being in the points every single race so far. Of course, uh, well, Saudi Arabia was a pretty difficult time for Lewis Hamilton. But so far, Russell's been looking pretty good. Probably both of the guys pretty much getting the best out of the car so far. They had a few talks about it, right? Because, of course, there has been some talk about, okay, the friction that might be here within the team. Because previous years with Valtteri Bottas, kind of been a very clear number one, number two type dynamic. Like, and Bottas is obviously going to be the support guy pretty much from the get-go. George Russell isn't necessarily going to be as much of a pushover, right? I think we saw that when he kind of had to sub in for Hamilton when Hamilton was unwell. He's a fighting driver. He's going to want to go toe to toe. And of course, well, a great opportunity to team with a guy like Lewis Hamilton, learn everything from him and beat him on occasion as well. Of course, well, there's been some talk about the potential friction that might arise between these two guys, what it means for Hamilton, because of course, you know, he's had it all his own way for the last few years. Not necessarily going to be the case anymore, but um, they've kind of downplayed any talk of friction between the two guys. As Russell says right here, obviously everyone wants to finish ahead of their teammates. Lewis and I have no interest in battling out for P5, P6. We don't really care if we come P5, P6. We want to be winning events, of course, and of course getting to the podiums. I think Hamilton was obviously very keen to try and pass Russell towards the end of the Australian Grand Prix, but um, Bono said in his ear, look, call it down on the power units, because then we might have some, well, engine issues and overheating issues, given the temperatures, the track temperatures, I believe, that day were a couple of degrees higher than they'd anticipated, therefore they kind of just had to hold position and, um, you know, as it was, but maybe Hamilton would have gone for the move if he had the opportunity to do so. Russell goes on to say, we want to work together to call that gap back. There's no hard feelings if he's ahead of me. There's also no hard, no hard feelings if I'm ahead of him. Not too concerned about that at the moment. Of course, other things for them to concern about them, concern themselves about, and well, none other, of course, than their current pace in the car right now. About seven tenths off the pace of the Ferrari, even the Red Bull, right? Red Bull certainly were slower in Australia. Maybe just a poor race setup in addition to Ferrari being absolutely rapid and seemingly bringing about another five horsepower to Australia. That was the talk a few days ago that um, they'd opened up their engine a little bit more because they're running at a conservative mode the first two races of the season. They believe they have the reliability in that first engine to give it about another five brake horsepower and that seemingly they're going to open it up even more when we come to it, well, a few races time when their second power unit comes into the car. That might make them very difficult to beat indeed. But as Total Wolf says, like, um, the solving the bouncing problem is not going to completely fix their pace. He was talking about the, um, the Australian Grand Prix. The fact that they weren't too far behind the pace and pretty much on par in Sector 1, Sector 2, when of course they're back straight in this type of stuff, but it was Sector 3, the kind of technical last sector where they were losing pretty much all their time to the Ferrari, which of course isn't the sector where the porpoising is playing a major issue. So he describes how there's like a gremlin in their car, I guess, being the porpoising problem, but that there's a few gremlins that we haven't actually found yet, right? And a few interesting words he actually says in this article, saying um, as a motor racer, I would say the chances that we can win the championship are 40 to 60, but as a mathematician, the odds are significantly worse against us, right? It's the current status quo, the maths behind it, that um, they are nowhere near the pace. But look, three races into the season, they don't want to write the title off as of yet, but um, they're thinking maybe maximum a 40% chance they can make this comeback and make it happen. Of course, it's looking rather unlikely, given Ferrari well, pulling a significant advantage on the rest of the competition, not just Charles Leclerc, of course, but um, in the constructors as well. Now, he goes on to say here, I thought was quite interesting, just uh, with regard to the correlation between what they're seeing on track and the data they got from the kind of um, extra centres they put on Hamilton's car in Australia to make sure they could get this information and what they've done in the simulator. We remember when, um, if you guys remember this, when the W13 was initially talked about with the no side pod design, that it was like a second quicker in the sim than the previous situation the car was. Now, um, seemingly, that's not how it's translated in reality at all, and they're having really difficult, they're having a really difficult time correlating between what they see in their simulations and their real world running. So I've got to get on top of that one, because um, well, we need to understand what's going on there, and we haven't found that yet, says Toto Wolf. The other talk about the Mercedes, of course, has been the engine power, which are really the first couple of races we saw seem to be a somewhat significant deficit. Now, um, it may still well be the case, especially if Ferrari are running their engine slightly turned down from where it could be, as we'll see here in a couple of seconds. But, um, you know, 
Toto Wolf also says, we have found the improvements that we believe we can be done on the E10. So of course, now they've got that kind of 10% um, well, biofuel in the engine, that, um, well, in the fueling system for the engine, which seems to, well, some people have suggested, Mercedes haven't really dealt with that as well in their new engine as Ferrari and maybe the other manufacturers have. Now, um, well, as Toto says, I think at the moment, the drag to performance picture isn't giving them enough credit. As in the engine, I think people really said that the engine's maybe only worth a tenth or two tenths the difference between what Ferrari have and what Mercedes have. It's more about the car design, which is limiting them to a greater degree. Of course, um, look, it's, only, it's not only Mercedes that want to bring some significant upgrades. They're trying to do a significant amount of work. They want to bring some new things to Imola. The problem is for them, there's only one practice session on the Friday. Like there's FP1, then it's straight into qualifying for the sprint race. And then you go into, of course, the race on the Sunday, right? So, the, well, you've got the sprint race here on the Saturday. So not the ideal weekend to bring any upgrades, really, because you don't get all that much time to test it. Only one hour of practice in FP1. And Ferrari were considering bringing some new things, but they're feeling pretty confident in their package. And they're probably going to keep it as is here going into, well, going into Imola, pretty much their home race. And well, as you can see right here, the highest point scorers ever after three rounds. Nico Rosberg in 2016 was 75. Charles Leclerc right behind him on 71. So, of course, the three fastest snaps, that counts for a point nowadays. But there's still a very impressive points total for Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari guys. And well, as of yet, no plans for a significant upgrade to Imola. They're pretty confident in their car. But certainly some upgrades are in the pipeline. This one, especially with regard to the power unit. So every team is allowed, what, three power units over the course of the season. If you take an extra one, you get these engine penalties that uh, Mercedes are even quite willing to take towards the end of the year because they could run those power units towards the end of the season at like max whack. As we saw with Hamilton's engine in Brazil, where it was a pretty new engine. They could just run it at the limit effectively and just, um, you know, get the most out of it and allow him to overtake the entire field and win the race. Obviously, there was Hamilton involved in there to some degree. It's not like, um, you know, Bottas wouldn't have won that race, let's just say. But bringing in a new power unit certainly helps. They're allowed three over the season until you get into kind of a, well, penalty territory. But to, well, Ferrari reckon their second power unit due sometime between Miami and Barcelona. So the way it works, I believe, is we go from Imola, then to Miami, and then between then and Barcelona, they're going to bring in the second power unit of the season sometime around that point. We've kind of heard the last few weeks, they've been running their current engine at effectively a conservative engine mode. We've seen that to a degree in the straight line speeds, the differences between the Red Bull, the Honda, you know, Red Bull Power Drain's engine, and what Ferrari have had to offer. Certainly at Bahrain, we saw a straight line speed difference. We also saw that at Saudi Arabia, which cost them the race right at the end of it, well, you could argue it cost them the race. The Red Bull was obviously rapid this weekend, not that weekend, and um, well, obviously the Red Bull, I think, in theory, probably had a better downforce setup for that weekend, and it seemed like in Australia, the Red Bull had kind of gone for a more downforce orientated setup, because we saw on the straight, when, um, well, when uh, Charles Leclerc had that pretty bad restart, Verstappen got right behind him, it felt like he probably would be overtaking him down that main straight, but Ferrari honestly almost outdragged the Red Bull and won that kind of race to the first corner. Now, um, whether that was due to the rumoured five horsepower increase, or maybe partly due to that, but also partly due to probably the downforce setting the Red Bull was running, but with an extra 10 brake horsepower, like um, it felt like the Ferrari and the Red Bull were much more competitive on straight line speeds, like much more similar, and the Ferrari much better in the corners at Australia with that extra 5 brake horsepower. Given out the 10 horsepower with their second power units, all of a sudden you're thinking of a significant advantage. Now look, Red Bull are looking to save weight, as are Mercedes, like um, I think Red Bull are trying to save about 1% in terms of weight, knock off about 10 kilos, 8 kilos, something along those lines, with some more expensive lighter materials. If that's the case, they should be saving already 3, 4 tenths helmet mark believes, but um, still, if Ferrari have more power in the tank effectively, which uh, seemingly they do, if they believe their reliability on this new engine is going to be greater, then they can get even more out of it in the straight line. And if they pair that with a new rear suspension, potentially new flooring, whatever they want to do, also new rear wing in the works, like um, then all of a sudden, if Ferrari can deal with their porpoising problem, which they seem to be having in a straight line, maybe, um, well, not necessarily more so than Mercedes, because they seem to be able to run the car lower and get away with a similar amount of porpoising than what Mercedes are getting, so it's not as bad as what Mercedes are dealing with, but um, if they can even fix that as well and look as poised as the Red Bull looks on a straight line, then all of a sudden the Ferrari have an absolutely dominant car, right? And they've already got an advantage in the constructors. So this is certainly a scary sign for the opposition when Ferrari have way more in the tank all across the board, and yet they're still pulling out an advantage in reliability as well. Toto Wolf did add a few interesting words to say on this, actually, because they're talking about the new Ferrari engine, saying that last year they went from probably 10 kilowatts down on what Mercedes were bringing to the party, now to about 10 kilowatts up. So basically saying that, yes, this new Ferrari engine is more powerful than what we have, which is, um, you know, very impressive. He says, if that happened, all credit to them. But he almost seems somewhat suspicious in these words about exactly how they've pulled this off, right? Because he says, that's something we've never achieved in the past. Yes, Mercedes have had the dominant engine for quite some time. Like, I'm, I'm sure he would openly admit that. But, um, you know, he's never achieved a deficit to a benefit or to an advantage quite like this, when Ferrari had a significant disadvantage last year. And now with effectively the same engines in these cars, they've now got a significant advantage. So maybe they understand something different about this new E10 fuel or however they've done it exactly. There's also been some talk about 
past the last few days, the close partnership they have with Ferrari, and whether that's going to make much difference to Alhas do this year. But, um, you know, as he's saying, look, they've made a significant step up in their engine, and seemingly even more to come as that, well, coming out of the Ferrari camp at the moment. Just as we close out the video, then this I thought was kind of interesting out of the races so far, only four drivers have been in the points every single race. Like, I'm just going just go to show the reliability factor comes in handy. Obviously, um, well, the Alpine in general hasn't been all that reliable for Alonso, but Ocon's been in the points seventh, sixth, and seventh. Of course, Hamilton and Russell both with a podium and a third and a fourth, but Hamilton with that uh, disappointing result in Saudi Arabia for him means that Russell, with a pretty consistent fourth, fifth, and third, has the second place in the constructors right now, but Charles Leclerc way ahead of the rest. First, second, third, fastest lap in every single race, he's leading the way. And lights out in Imola only a week away now, because the sprint race on the Saturday, that means that we got, well, more racing action even sooner than we usually do. But very much in tweeting your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new as always, take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.